Hello, this is Gary Double Nine Seven, and welcome to my channel. So, uh, this is a bit of a beginner's guide, I guess, uh, in regards to um, what you need to get going in Farm Simulator 19. So, I did my first recording, and that went for on for half an hour, and I thought that was far too long. <laughs> so, we might look at the um, menu screen, uh, look at the sort of equipment you're going to need, and um, to get you going at least, and then and then uh, sort of field management. Those are sort of the important things. Um, that we're going to sort of look at today um, and then maybe in another video how to make uh, money like make some proper money uh, with the tools that you got on hand so the first thing that we want to look at is uh, sort of the sort of the equipment you're going to need uh, when it comes to uh, what sort of farm activities you're going to be doing so we're going to look at cropping we're not going to look at logging or anything like that we're just going to look at a cropping setup uh, just to begin with so the first thing uh, we want to look at is, well, where do we buy all of this? So there is a in-game shop. This is Ravensport. So there is an in-game shop that you can go to um, to buy stuff. When you go to purchase stuff, uh, just push P, um, P on the keyboard, uh, and it'll bring you into the shop, and it'll give you all the tractors, harvesters, forage, uh, uh, forage harvesters, sugarcane technology, beet beat technology <laughs> so they're going to give you a lot of equipment and if you never worked on a farm before this is all going to be a little foreign to you some of it's going to make sense some of it's not going to make sense and then you've got all your attachments to go with your equipment and then you've got um, your pallets of, uh, where you can buy fertilizer herbicides seeds and all the rest of it and then you've got your placeables of buildings and sheds and stuff you can buy then you got your landscaping don't touch landscaping for now just stay away from it <laughs> you'll ruin your game if you play around with landscaping if you haven't played this game before maybe later on play around with it you'll know what i mean uh, once you start playing around with it so how do i set up a farm when i first start off so in a farm management scenario you get about 1.2 million i think then you can borrow about 500,000 on top of that it sounds like a lot but it's not uh, a property like the one i'm looking at now the one i've bought this one here is eight point eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars to buy and i bought this and then i bought this later on just recently this little patch of land over here and i and i've expanded slowly so i bought a big chunk of land um it's a little crazy to do so but there is some pluses to having big fields um, compared to having smaller fields. And the big plus about big fields is you can plant a lot of crop, <laughs> basically. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, there's a lot of land around the outside of a big paddock like this, um, which I use to baleage. But anyway, the equipment side of things that you're going to need to get going. Uh, once you've decided on the land that you want to buy, it can be anywhere. Just make up your mind about your bang for dollar. You're gonna get you're getting um, if you buy a lot of land, um, it's gonna reduce your ability to uh, purchase equipment. So buying smaller plots uh, will give you more banking, uh, more money in your bank account to buy equipment because the equipment in the game is quite expensive. Now, when it comes to harvesters. Uh, when you start out when I play I rent them I don't buy them I just lease them so if you go into details like a harvester like this um, you got an option to lease the lease will give you you got to do a down payment of 5,300 and then per day is 1,000 a day at game days so that's how it works so just be aware that you will get charged initially an upfront cost so it's better to hold on to a harvester until you're deciding to sell it or uh, take the lease back and actually buy a harvester so you can buy a harvester off the bat if you want but you got to weigh up how often the harvester is going to bring income to you 
because what harvesters do, the bigger the harvesters get, um, the bigger the headers get. So these headers, the one I've got is only a five meter header um, length, the header length. Whereas the Massey Ferguson one we looked at is 7.6. So you get a, a, you get wider berths of the field, you're able to harvest more at a time. So that's what a bigger harvester will give you, um, bigger header space. The, when it comes to what sort of crops you're gonna grow, uh, I suggest that you stay away from corn because corn require a corn header, as you can see, so that's an extra expense that you have to have on top of your normal crops if you were gonna go away from corn. So the easiest way to judge what sort of crops you wanna plant is the ones that don't require any sort of, um, any plowing. Uh, so the, to the type of the seeders I'm talking about are ones that directly sow into a field after you harvest, so you don't need to um, cultivate. So anything that requires you to cultivate or plow, uh, stay away from it until you get established and then you can venture out and grow corn or cotton or whatever it is that you want to grow. But the direct seeders don't require any um, cultivation, so it saves you on equipment down the track. Uh, buy whatever you can afford at the time. Uh, I've still, <laughs> I'm still running a small one. <laughs> that's three meter wide and all they're doing is they, they they offer you options of going bigger and then the pre and then they offer you the ability to um, um, also incorporate fertilizer into the field so find a direct seeder that that doesn't uh, doesn't require any cultivation it saves you on buying another rig uh, so I would buy generally buy a cedar um, I generally rent a header, uh, a harvester. When it comes to plows, I generally rent them as well. When you when you buy when you first buy a paddock, you're going to have to plow it after you've cropped it. When you've taken the crop off, you're going to have to go and plow that paddock then. And you're probably only going to do it once if you decide to buy a direct seeder because of the crops that you sow into it. So I'd just rent a plow off the bat, buy one later on, um, like I have when I've got a little bit of spare money and I'll invest in a plow and maybe use it to plow other paddocks that I buy. So I would generally just rent a plow. The other thing that you're gonna come across um, is liming in the game. So you're gonna have to put lime on your paddocks every third crop. Now liming is expensive so I generally, if I'm starting out in the game, I will generally just rent this. I won't, I won't buy one straight up because I'm just not going to have the money for it. So I would buy a spreader like this. This is the lime spreader. You need it put on your paddocks. Um, if you don't do it, um, it's 15% lower yield, reduced yield on your fields. So it's worth leasing one out, spreading it, and then returning it returning it for the lease later on you can buy it because you you can use it to also uh, fertilize your field as well as use lime uh, the other thing to invest in is trailers so i buy a bunch of these and increase the capacity you can do whatever you like you can buy you can buy a big 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 one like this 35 grand the file's 31,000 liters I buy three of those upgrade them and it gives me 36,000 liters so um, you make up your mind on how you want to do it it doesn't really matter as long as the idea is to buy these trailers so you can um, go and sell your crops once they're full so that's the idea so you're gonna need a way to transport them now in the game uh, you can see my trailers over there. I've got three of them hooked up. I've got a couple over there and a couple over here. I've invested in a um, chaser bin. You might not have the money to buy a chaser bin straight away. And a chaser bin, the ba bonus thing about a chaser bin that I like is it's got an auger on it. It allows you to dump. Uh, I'll just show you. <laughs> it has an auger on it. So 
And the whole point of having a chaser bin in a field, or any bins that you like, it doesn't it doesn't have to be a chaser bin, but I like them because you're able to dump goods into um, a trailer. And the idea is to keep up with your harvester, because you don't want your harvester to stop. Obviously there's a tutorial, so you want to keep your harvester going at all times. And a chaser bin has, has an auger that allows you to dump goods into it. So I'll just take the load off him. I love this tractor. <laughs> so I've driven something like this before in the past. So my background is I've, I've, I've done 20 years in farming, um, on and off, uh, with dairy farms and crop farms. Come to Australia, worked in the outback, and uh, a lot of irrigation crops out there. I uh, worked in New Zealand uh, as a farm manager. I uh, had my own dairy, ha dairy farm. So I did a lot of dairy cows and stuff like that. But anyway. So the idea with the chaser bin is to keep the harvester going. And this is something I'm familiar with. So this is not a practice that you guys have to do. Um, you might not have the money or capital to do this up front. Because where I'm situated there are no silos. weeds growing in there <laughs> and that's the idea is to keep that harvester going and then fill up your bins and then you take them to market right? so that's the type of equipment that I'd invest in um, and then you've got to got to work out you need to spray her, uh, um, herbicide on your paddocks and fertilizer and I invest in these two options <coughs> <coughs> excuse me um, this is going to be your backbone this is crucial you're going to need I'd buy these outright if I could I might lease them if I don't have the money I don't know what your situation is when it comes to how much land you bought but I'd invest in these as soon as possible and what this brings us to is the ability to um, do contracts um, in the game so we have contracts that you can take up like fertilizing field four he's going to pay me 18 grand 18 and a half grand to do fertilizer in field four now you see fertilizing jobs all over the place this is going to be your backbone this is going to be this is going to supplement your crops big time so this is half of half of my income here so in between the crops and contracts is going to be um, where you're going to make um, a lot of your bulk of your income up. So contracts income on Wednesday was um, 100 grand. My harvest crop was 100 grand. And sold bales 24 grand. The, the main thing when it comes to field management is um, Is, is, is so we've got a growth stage that shows you the growth of crops uh, dark green means it's just about um, the next stage will be ready to harvest uh, there's four stages when it comes to growth uh, three stages for harvest uh, harvest is obviously purpled and ploughed and remove crops then we've got soil composition and this is something you need to understand we fertilize need ploughed need lime now my field needs lime right because it's that stage of the crop where every third stage will need liming I need to do it to increase because uh, re it reduces my yield by 15% if I don't do it um, so I'm gonna need to do that the next thing will happen when I plant weeds are gonna pop up <laughs> so I'm gonna need to weed so when they come up uh, purple uh, so there's no, there's no sort of, well it's not purple, I don't know what sort of colour it's like. A <laughs> so you're going to need to, you're going to need to weed and you need to fertilise. You need to fertilise in two different stages of growth stage. So in between, you need to fertilise in one of these stages, you need to fertilise twice. In the early stages and in the late stages, you can't fertilise on the same growth stage. So if it's all this one colour, 
you can't fertilize you, if you fertilize on the stage and try to fertilize again on the stage you're wasting fertilizer it won't happen so it needs to be on two different stages and this will increase your yield by 50 percent so make sure you do that that's huge the second part of this game is the selling points you need to know exactly where to sell your goods to now there are different sell points within each map the quickest way to do it is to filter through it have a look at the top line to see where uh, what what's so this is soybeans because this is what I'm looking at you can tag it right tag it jump out and see there's a blue there's a green line sorry it shows indicates on the map where to go and that will just that's just going to be flashing so you know you can sell your grain at the highest bidder down in the central grain elevator so that's one way of filtering through um, where to sell the highest prices to this is going to become crucial early stages you're not going to have the flexibility to do this but later on you will you'll be able to hold on to your crops and sell when they get high because that's the idea the next part of this and this is something this is crucial this helper refill system here they have make sure you turn this off because if you fill up your tractor with fuel fill it full of fuel fertilizer or seed or whatever and send them off to do a field and spray and this is turned on they're not going to use any of that they're going to just charge you extra it will consume more the helper cost will increase so you want to make sure this is turned off and they use what they have um on the tractor and not just buy it directly because that's just you're going to see your money go down the drain really really fast so that's that's a basic overview of the game and um sort of things to get you going uh hopefully you enjoyed this video and um there's a lot more to it than this but if you have your contracts running and you have uh, your fiddle um you're harvesting your field and keeping up with that you can get your equipment going by and leasing your equipment you need to make a judgment on um, how effective each one is i definitely invest in fertilizing uh, tractor to do fertilizing to do contracts and to do your own fields um, and also look um, outside of contracts and your own harvest and for an example i own this field but if you had a field with grass you can invest in baleage technology so baling we call it silage here um it's technically right but i i'd call it i used to call this baleage because you had to differentiate between silage and baleage when you're on the farm when someone was talking to you so we call this uh silage uh, baleage so it's basically wrap grass and what happens it fermentates and cows love this stuff they go nuts for this stuff they just you've seen cows they kick up their hind legs they go nuts um, trying to roll this out though these are heavy bales you're trying to roll this out <laughs> they're heavy <laughs> I hated it because they rot you see and cows loved it and basically it's grass it's rotten grass you got to roll this out and it's supposed to roll out like a carpet when you push push the bales but it doesn't do that um, yeah anyway fun times so I make money on the side by doing this in between because when it rains you're going to need something to do um, so this is a bit of a side hustle and um, yeah just think about uh, different ways to make money um, in this game is I, I made 20, 20 grand or something like um, I've been making money off it 20 24 5 grand uh, today so there's definitely money in alterating um, um, and setting up your property just remember that um, you can use your grass on the fringes of your paddocks to turn them into something you might not be able to afford a baleage straight away uh, where do they call it baling technology <laughs> see that one's cost me 76,000 but the mower front on it is cheap the mower is 19 20 grand so you might not be able to afford this straight away but it's something to uh, uh, work towards and um, each bale these are fluctuating prices as well they'll be on the silage menu but they can go from 500 to over a thousand each so it's definitely worth doing 
so yeah so i might just end the video there instead of rambling on um hopefully you've enjoyed it uh leave a like hit the subscribe button uh leave a comment let me know what your thoughts are on about the game but yeah i haven't been able to put it down <laughs> all right see ya bye